Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmuelkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's episode, we are going to talk about how does stress affect my gut? And this is really important because there is a lot of stress in the world. Um, everybody is running a little bit more stress than we probably should be. And this can really take a toll on not only our bodies, our brains, but also our guts. And our gut is super important to our health because that is where most of the toxins enter our body. Um, from the food we eat, from uh, chemicals that are in our foods or toxins that are in our uh, drinking water, whatever it may be, bacteria, they enter in and we need to have a good defense system to prevent any issues in our gut. And stress can prevent that defense system from working well. So we really need a good gut barrier um, in order to prevent infections through our gut, but also to help absorb nutrients from our food. Uh, that's like the next important part is that we need a good functioning gut barrier with microbiome or bacteria, good healthy bacteria in our gut in order to uh, not only protect ourselves, but also to absorb our nutrients well. So we're going to talk about one paper here. Uh, let me just go to it. And this paper is from 2016. It is from the a current in neuropharmacology, and it's called Mechanisms by Which Stress Affects the Experimental and Clinical Inflammatory Bowel Disease, and how there's a role of the brain and gut axis. Okay, so inflammatory bowel disease is um, a general term for either Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, um, both that are inflammatory issues in the gut that then are exacerbated by stress, exacerbated by what we eat. Um, but there is also a role in how stress affects IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. And mostly irritable bowel syndrome is a functional problem in which they can't really find any distinct uh, inflammation or distinct markers that say there is a disease. So let's just talk go through this paper here a little bit. And there's some great graphics as well. Um, so here right away in the background, stress activates the brain-gut axis, which results in mast cell activation. Mast cells are a cell that release histamine. Um, and then increase in production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Pro-inflammatory cytokines cause inflammation. And other endocrine and humoral, so like humoral means like antibodies, uh, mediators. Um, we looked at the brain conveys both neural, endocrine, and circulatory messages to the gut through the gut-brain axis, reflecting changes in uh, corticotropin-releasing hormone, mast cell activity, neurotransmission. I'll explain all this in the, in the picture, okay? So we already kind of talked about in the past um, the vagus nerve. And if you want to go back and look, watch my video on the vagus nerve, um, you can go back and do so. But the vagus nerve is kind of that main neural connection between the brain and the gut but there are these other endocrine and circulatory messages, uh, endocrine meaning like hormonal messages that can affect the gut, okay? Um, so if the conclusion here was acute and chronic stress enhances intestinal permeability, so basically causes a leaky gut, which weakens the tight junctions, same thing, causing leaky, leaky gut, and increasing bacterial translocation into the intestinal wall. Basically, the microbiome that's there to protect us or microbiome that's there to protect us from bad bacteria are able to translocate into our bloodstream, which we do not want. Um, so let's go right away to this graphic here. Okay, so on the bottom, we have the intestinal barrier. Okay, so we have these one cell layer thick of, um, they're called columnar epithelial cells. This one cell layer thick is what separates all of these toxins and all these um, bacteria, microbiome, um, all of our the food particles from our uh, bloodstream. And so it's pretty, it, it needs to be pretty strong. And it's got these tight junctions that are connecting it uh, in between. And so what happens is in our 
in our gut line, in our uh, hole in our colon um, or intestines, we have a, um, a lumen, basically it's a hole. And that's where we absorb nutrients. Well, there shouldn't be any bacteria in our intestine, but our small intestines, but there should be bacteria in our colon or our large intestine. And so these bacteria help protect um, other invaders, but it also helps, um, helps us break down fiber. And so a lot of times, if we're eating poor foods, this can cause inflammation and then cause maybe or possibly a leaky gut. At the same time, let's go back up here. So we talked about how does stress affect our gut. And so stress in our brain is a physiological, uh, it's a physiological stressor. It's a, uh, it could be an emotional stressor or a mental stressor. And this affects our limbic system. And this limbic system is kind of like the, um, is a, a guide to our emotions and it activates our autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system has two main, main, uh, main drivers, the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight and the parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest. And so if stress is activating this fight or flight system, we activate an HPA axis, which is just the hypothalamus and pituitary going to the adrenals and then and that's more through the bloodstream and then we have an autonomic nervous system access which is going also through the bloodstream or directly to the adrenals through nerves and so that releases cortisol and adrenaline both are hormones that go through the bloodstream and they activate the um, they activate the gut basically they slow down they slow down gut transit and by slowing down gut transit, food or waste or toxins or bacteria sit in that part of the gut um, and can cause inflammation, can cause the leaky gut. At the same time, this cortisol and adrenaline also activates mast cell activation. So mast cells are cells of the immune system that release histamine. And histamine is generally, when you think of histamine, you think of allergies. And so if you have seasonal allergies or allergies to dogs or cats, it's a overactivity of these mast cells releasing histamine. And so you get a lot of drainage. They're trying to get rid of those, uh, those allergens. And so this, by releasing histamine, it is damaging. It causes more inflammation. It causes leaky gut down here. Um, at the same time, then all of this inflammation, this uh, gut flora, then if these tight junctions break through, then these little green gut flora or bacteria can translocate into the bloodstream. And this causes more inflammation. So cytokines like TNF alpha, um, these metabolites from the microbiome, all go back to activate the brain through many different ways. And therefore it's this big loop of this brain gut access that just causes this chronic inflammatory insult. Now, if we go down even more, we can see how this more reacts to or relates to um, multiple diseases, okay? So here we have stress again, and stress can be caused from psychological disorders, from abnormal behavior, just cognitive deficit that causes uh, physiological stress, generalized anxiety, um, autism, ADHD, uh, visceral pain. All of this, it's just this bi-directional um, access causing stress. And this leads to this neuronal, endocrine, or uh, hormonal, and then immune cell responses. And so stress through this brain gut access, which we just talked about, is affecting all of these systems. And this can lead to a bunch of different diseases, the functional GI disorders, um, IBD, or, ear, or uh, inflammatory bowel disease ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and then IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, whether it's post-infectious or it's just due to um, anxiety or other things. And here, if we go a little bit more deeper into it, this brain good access leads to neurotransmitter releases that we talked about, cortisol. Uh, so this is cortisol releasing factor, cortic uh, corticotropin releasing hormone that causes the release of more cortisol, uh, at least a degranulation of mast cells, leads to increased bacterial translocation across the, uh, the membrane, across that cell layer, 
that is trying to protect us, which leads to activation of T cells or immune cells. And this leads to dysbiosis, it leads to dysfunctional microbiome um, in our gut, and then also inflammation. All of this leads to poor gut function, and poor gut function in the end leads back to poor brain function. So this is really key to, to think about here. Um, if we have a lot of stress in our lives, whether that be physiological, as in we are just doing really, really hard workouts and not getting enough rest, or mental, emotional, whether it's with our jobs, our lives, our kids, our families, um, it can really affect our gut. And by affecting our gut, it can not only lead to chronic diseases, it can lead to um, poor absorption. It can lead to lack of nutrient availability. So even though we're eating, we're maybe not getting the most out of our nutrients. Um, and the gut is so important to our health because this is how we, we get our nutrients to, to survive. And then if the gut doesn't have that good barrier, then we're also possibly absorbing toxins and chemicals. Um, and that puts more stress on our liver to have to detoxify. It. So it's really important to handle your stress. And there are lots of ways to do that, um, but it's, you gotta first identify it and try to take control of it, whether that's even just decreasing the amount of stress in your life by having less obligations, or to, to take some time for yourself uh, each day and remember to breathe, remember to relax, remember to uh, have a positive attitude and love what you're doing. Um, I can always do more on this in the future. Um, and so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope that um, you get a lot of benefit from it. Um, and otherwise, stay healthy. Thanks.